Ever love a band or an artist but hate an album cover by them? Something that makes you roll your eyes, question their sanity, or just recoil in disgust? I know you do because there are some truly awful covers out there. Covers that are lazy, covers that are boring, and some that are just downright disgusting. Let's take a look at some, shall we? Hi everyone, I'm Paul Crayson, and you're watching Music Mentions. A good album cover should be intriguing, should be visually interesting, give you a sense of the music that's contained inside. Unfortunately, good musicians often make bad decisions when it comes to their album artwork. Today, I'm just going to scratch the surface on this topic with 13 album covers that I think are truly shitty for one reason or the other. Believe me, there are so many more out there. I had a difficult time whittling down to just 13. It's easy to find terrible covers by mid-tier or unknown bands. They're a dime a dozen. However, today I'm specifically going to be focusing on album covers that are made by pretty famous and well-respected musicians. Some of the music contained on these albums is great. Some of it not very good, but all of these covers truly suck. This list is not in any particular order, so let's go for it. Number one, Embryonic by the Flaming Lips. This is a Lips album from 2009. The band was obviously trying to allude to some kind of rebirth or another phase of their music. Regardless, what we get here is what looks to be a five-year-old kid being ripped out of Bigfoot's wife's vagina or out of some big hairy spider or something. First of all, I generally hate seeing kids on album covers. Not rock and roll at all. Listen to me, you bands. Putting kids on album covers is usually creepy and generally to be avoided. To make matters worse, this kid is making sure everyone sees the underside of his tongue. Is he gleeking on us? That's just gross. And what's with all that yellow scribbling? Maybe once the kid was extracted from Mrs. Bigfoot and saw his picture, he started scratching it up in a fit of rage. I don't blame him. Number two, Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel. Famous album and a personal favorite of mine. But what were they thinking with this cover? Did they want to show how short Paul Simon was compared to Art Garfunkel? Simon's distracted, but Garfunkel is photobombing him and looking directly at the camera, seeming to say, hey, Look how cool I look with my big old mustache that's made of Simon's hair. And why is Garfunkel standing so close behind him on the sidewalk and not next to him? This makes no sense unless Simon insisted that he was featured more prominently than Garfunkel since he was the songwriter. Who knows? Still, terrible album cover. Number three, Fireball by Deep Purple. This one's from 1971. A truly classic album with a classically moronic cover. All I see is a giant sperm shooting into outer space containing the heads and elongated necks of the band as the sperm's genetic material. Like, what the fuck? I know there were a lot of drugs going around in 1971, but didn't these guys have someone halfway sober at the record company? that could have alerted them to the fact that this wasn't a good idea. At least this cover didn't have any kids on it, so I guess that's a victory of sorts. Number four, Pablo Honey by Radiohead. This is Radiohead's first album. Let's take a look. We have a giant white flower with yellow stamens bending slightly inwards into a freaking unhappy black and white baby in the middle that's surrounded by cupcakes with sprinkles or something. Almost looks like that Gerber kid. All I think when I see this cover is I hope a giant bee lands and stings that kid right in the eye. 
would serve him right for agreeing to be part of this travesty. Absolutely terrible cover. Let's move on to number five, Mellow Gold by Beck. This is Beck's breakthrough album from 1994. What the hell is this cover? Looks like some bad steampunk art project from a giggling little kid in sixth grade. Hey Nancy, come over here and see what I made. First of all, I want to know where this kid got that bullet to use as the dick for this obviously stimulated rodent robot soldier. I do have to say that what looks like a pulley used for the ball sack was an inspired choice. Bravo. And what's up with the green eyes? Overall, a true album cover disaster. Number six, The Miracle by Queen. This Queen cover is just so bad. I'm sure the band meant to convey how they were one as a band with one head and one vision or something like that. But this was not the way to do it. Listen, bands, just because you have Photoshop, it doesn't mean you need to use it on your album cover. When I see this cover, I see a disturbing, four-faced, five-eyed, one-necked science experiment gone wrong. The real miracle here is that anyone got past the cover to actually listen to the music inside. Truly horrendous. Number seven, Beatles, Yesterday and Today. Easily the most well-known bad cover of all time. This is the original Yesterday and Today cover before they pulled it from sale and replaced it with something less, shall we say, grotesque. Once again, we've got goddamn kids on the cover, although this time they're dolls. And this time they threw some raw meat in there as an extra touch. At least the kids are dismembered, so I have to give them a point there. Otherwise, it just shows you that even the mighty Beatles could steer themselves into a bad album cover. Number eight, Paranoid by Black Sabbath. Classic album. Another example of what the hell were they thinking? The only thing even remotely redeeming about this cover is the stop-motion photography. But otherwise, you've got some idiot in Speedos holding a pirate sword and shield, jumping out of the forest trying to scare us. Ooh, yeah, that's really scary. And can we talk about that helmet for a second? It's a fucking moped helmet. Is that supposed to scare us too? He doesn't even have the strap tightened. Yes, it's a truly iconic album cover, but it's also just garbage. Moving on to number nine, Balance by Van Halen. Once again, we have kids on a terrible rock and roll album cover. Go figure. Here, we've got another artist employing Photoshop again in a bad way by taking some prepubescent naked twins conjoined at the torso and putting them onto some seesaw in the middle of a barren hellscape. One kid is obviously not happy with the situation, and the other one is like, don't worry, I've got this under control. No, no you don't. There's nothing about this cover that is in control. Number 10, Pet Sounds from the Beach Boys. This is a masterpiece whose cover is just a play on words and lazy as fuck. What the hell do goats have to do with rock and roll unless they're used as evil hell goats on a death metal album cover. Did Brian Wilson say something like, Hey fellas, I've got a great idea for an album cover. Let's go to the goat zoo. Well, knowing what I know about Brian, maybe he did say that. At least Mike Love has enough sense to use Dennis Wilson as a shield in case Dennis's goat decides to go for the jugular. I do have to say, though, that animals on album covers are much better than having kids on album covers. Number 11, Go to Heaven by the Grateful Dead. Boy, oh boy, if there's ever an advertisement to not overdo controlled substances, it's this cover. The Dead dressed as a disco wedding band. Truly awful. Check out those lapels. And really, do we need that much chest hair to look at when we're listening to Althea? Yuck. At least it seems Jerry kind of knew this was a bad idea and insisted on wearing sunglasses to somewhat hide his embarrassment. Number 12, Love Sexy from Prince. More white flowers and more nudity, this time from Prince, who's wearing nothing except a necklace. In general, artists shouldn't be posing on albums in the au naturel. 
they all should have learned this lesson from that famous John Lennon and Yoko album. Look that one up if you're not familiar. It's not YouTube friendly. Not much else to say here except despite the cover, the music is really good. We substantiate another rule with this one. White flowers should never appear on an album cover. And number 13, Live It Up from Crosby, Stills, and Nash. This one is just plain undecipherable. Where do I start? There's so much going wrong here. Let's begin with the giant hot dogs, since that's what everyone remembers about this cover. The hot dogs literally have spikes disguised as barren trees, spearing them in the middle, ouch, and the trees are being felled by loggers. Whose nightmare fever dream did this one come from? My money's on Crosby. It's gotta be. And why the hell is all this carnage happening on the moon anyway? Is that what NASA's not been telling us? I'm so confused. Along with kids and white flowers, hot dogs should never be on an album cover, ever. I must admit that finding awful album covers is really easy. There's just so many of them out there. It really makes you wonder what these bands, artists, record companies were thinking when they decided to release these albums with these covers to the public. They must have thought at the time that these album covers were great and that they'd sell a lot of music for the artists. It's just truly mind-blowing how such monstrosities can make it out there. There's so many of these bad album covers by truly great artists and, and bands that are out there. I will no doubt do at least another one or two videos on these. There's just so many, and uh, this mine is very rich with gems. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of my picks today. Also, I would love to know if you have some favorite bad album covers from popular artists. I'm not talking about people that no one's heard of. But if you have some, let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching my channel. I'm Paul Crason. This is Music Mentions. If you like these kind of videos, give me a like. Hit the subscribe. Hit the notifications. I will see you next time.